All right, today I'm going to give you guys a detailed look at this uh, asset ring figure. And uh, it's a Laurel number seven worker. And uh, on the cover, on the slip cover, it's a box of art. And 118 scale. That's the ring figure included. On the side of the box, on the back, there's a spot where you could actually touch the figure in there. And once you take the slip cover off, there's the box as the ring. And then inside, there's a foam box. And then uh, here it has a drawing, well, a little picture of the character. And then on the back, uh, some instructions. And then uh, here's the styrofoam box. And then there's the, uh, the mech, and the figure, and the weapon. So here we have everything outside of packaging and uh, here's the little figure. It's basically a three and three quarter inch figure, same as uh, G.I. Joe's. So you could probably swap parts with G.I. Joe figures and uh, have them pilot these uh, mech. And um, so let's get a close look at the figure first. Uh, he is, uh, he's got a lot of weathering on him, quite dirty. And uh, one thing I didn't like uh, is the harness that he has on. It's a little too big for him. It would have been nice if the shoulder harness it's a little tighter. So it fits him a little bit better. And then there's the mech. The paint job on this thing is uh, really good. Uh, it reminds me a lot of uh, 3A's, uh, 3A figures. And uh, here's the weapon, an axe. It's a collapsible axe. And it extends out right there. So the mech could hold it. So let's start off with the articulation of this uh, human character. Uh, as you can see, a uh, head is on a ball joint. And you can look up about that far. And then base of the neck, there's another ball joint. Shoulders on the ball hinge, and then the bicep, there is a swivel joint, and then the hinge elbows. Um, actually, I think there are double double hinge uh, elbows, and then the hinge wrists. And then the chest, there's a ball joint, and the hips are also on a ball joint. Mm, cut joint around the thigh, double jointed knees, ball hinge ankles, and then there's a pivot for his ankle, for his uh, foot. And here's the back side of the figure. And you can see I took the harness off, which is right here. It's just a rubber piece. And you could easily take that off uh, by removing the top half of his body. And you could easily do that because it is held together with the ball joint. As far as articulation for the mech, uh, shoulders are on a ball hinge joint, and then there is bicep swivel, and you can see there's uh, double jointed elbows, and he could bend way over 90 degrees, clearly see here, way over 90 degrees, and then ball jointed wrist. Now the hands are actually rubberized, it's, uh, it's well it's not even rubberized, it's a full on rubber piece, so um, uh, he could grip weapons uh, pretty easily, uh, and uh, it's it's rigid enough where it doesn't most likely is not gonna fall off. So I, I don't think there's an issue with that at all. And then uh, around the um, around the waist, there's a ball joint there, and then the hips are also on a ball joint. And then here you can see there's a hinge joint around the knees. And then the ankle is on a hinge joint, and it does pivot left and right, and toes articulation. So as far as the mech, uh, it's quite articulated, which I'm happy about. But uh, one thing, well, I mean, it's to be expected because uh, the figure is three and three quarter inch, so you kind of get an idea that how tall this thing is gonna be. And uh, here's the size comparison. So he's a little over six inches in height. That's about it. Because uh, uh, we have the Marvel Select um, Thor. He's about what seven, 
seven inches or so and uh, Wolverine's a little shorter and uh, Ultron right there so he's about six and a half I think six and a half about seven somewhere around there because uh, I think Thor is about seven and a half or so because he's a little taller and to put the figure inside all you need to do is uh, lift up the, the top dome and then you could actually slide this whole body structure out and uh, on there this is how you could climb in and then now uh, when you slide this uh, bottom section out uh, this piece sticks out at the end there so if I were to close it you can see how it, how it goes back in and then if I open it it extends out kind of cool a cool little um, mechanism I uh, know one thing that uh, happened to mine is that uh, the handle broke off right here it is articulated uh, you're supposed to be able to swivel it uh, forward and back a little bit uh, but uh, after a few turns and uh, it snapped right off and here's a look at the piece that broke off so uh, let's take a look at the inside uh, detailing on it is quite nice actually can I see there are a couple of uh, some sort of uh, grenade looking thing stuck in there uh, there's a screw hole right there and then same on this side and then there's a little panel on that side I'm not sure what that is uh, it's not removable and then there's the seat it's quite dirty and uh, uh, could go in his legs could go in right there and then he could actually sit sit down comfortably but very tight and uh, on the uh, on the inside you can see there's a handle right there for him to open up the hatch kind of neat looking so let's put him in and uh, here he is, fully situated inside the mech. And I uh, close him back up. And the only thing that's exposed is his head through the um, through the windshield here. But uh, yeah, this is what it looks like uh, in there. Zoom out a little bit so you guys can see a little bit more of him. So let's close him up. And here he is, uh, inside the Mac. Now, uh, closing this uh, canopy, um, there's no locking mechanism or anything. It's only held on, held together with uh, friction. Uh, so there's a hinge back here, a hinge joint, and uh, it won't open up. Uh, even if you uh, throw him across the room, that canopy is not going to open up. So he's going to be fine sitting, sitting inside. And another good look at the Mac. There's number seven. On his uh, armor. So we get a closer look uh, at that uh, paint job. It's really, really good. Again, it re reminds me a lot like the three A figures. Uh, it's quite awesome. But uh, the price tag of this thing is uh, it's quite, quite high. Uh, initially, uh, I thought it was really high, so I didn't bother um, taking a chance with these figures. Because uh, uh, most of these, well, this one in particular, it's about 100 bucks or 100 but a little more than 100 bucks. And uh, for something this tiny, uh, it's really expensive if you think about it. I uh, want to give it a try, at least uh, see how it is, because uh, from pictures, he looks absolutely gorgeous and uh, really well done. And uh, now that I have it in hand, I don't think I'll get any more. Uh, it's it's kind of cool uh, to have something like this, but uh, is it worth getting the line? No, because they are just so expensive. Uh, this thing cost me... Uh, a little over a hundred bucks and uh, the size of this is small even though the paint job is absolutely gorgeous but still it's not worth it for me uh, at not at this price if this was a um, $60 figure 
$60 set, then uh, yeah, I, I, I would be praising this uh, uh, like crazy. But uh, with it being over 100 bucks, yeah, no, I don't think it's worth it. But now I have it in hand, it doesn't, it doesn't have that extreme wow factor that I needed in order to justify any more of these uh, purchases.